Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to conduct frequency response measurements in a program called ARTA. This is what I use for my testing and it's a great program. So let's get right into it. So to get started, you're going to want to go up to this play button. And this dialog box gives you various options for test signal level and the type of sweep that you want to do. These are the settings that I use. Um, you can use them or you can play around and, and pick something different. So let's get right into it and start, uh, start with our test. So ARTA is a little different. It wants you to pick your gating window which helps eliminate room reflections by turning the microphone off before any room reflections uh, approach the microphone and so you're just wanting if you're just wanting to focus on the frequency response of your speaker then you're going to want to gate out the the uh, effects from the room and so to do that you're going to left mouse click which tells you uh, when you want the microphone to turn on and then right selecting the right mouse button defines the turn off and so if you try to make your window too short so right now this is 120 samples and it's 1.25 millisecond window if you try to do a frequency response by selecting up here in this bar it's going to give you an error saying that you don't have enough samples you need at least 128 and so if we just simply drag our our turn off point out to um, until it's more than 128 then we should be able to, to uh, produce a frequency response and so there we have our frequency response I use a 50 dB vertical scale which is uh, standard some manufacturers like to increase the vertical scale to somewhat embellish the results and I can show you what that looks like so you can really see how that squishes the frequency response and makes it look much flatter Another little trick that they like to play is uh, adding some smoothing. So ARTA defaults to 24 dB per octave smoothing. And so if you actually apply one third octave, you can really see how that embellishes the results. So if you're publishing this to uh, an online forum or in a paper, then please just use the 124 dB smoothing and keep your vertical scale to only 50 dB. So so there. Um, now this yellow bar is a little handy feature in ARTA that really tells you your gating frequency. So because I'm measuring today in a really small room, um, I'm not able to get very good resolution into the base frequencies. So if you want uh, improved results into the base frequencies, you have two options. You can uh, do what's called a ground plane measurement or you can take your speakers and either outdoors, an anechoic chamber, or try to find a bigger room where the uh, room reflections are going to be much further along in, in the, in the uh, impulse response. And so these little blips here are reflections coming to the microphone, and so we're shutting the microphone off before those uh, little nuances get there. And so what you can see here, we can actually get rid of um, by double clicking the right mouse button you can get rid of the uh, gate altogether and you can see our frequency responses now uh, including the reflections in the room which causes this uh, the severe irregularities in the, in the response and so um, if you want just kind of a general trend of what the base is doing you can use the smoothing just to see uh, what's happening which is useful but it doesn't it's not helpful as far as anything uh, through the mid-range in trouble so so um, to export your results, you can either use the snipping tool, the Windows snipping tool. What I like to do is to select copy and it opens a dialog box that prompts you to put in some details. What it's wanting to do is export this as an image file, which produces a um, better quality image than if you use the Windows snipping tool. So uh, you can enter in your um, some, some text there that's going to populate into your graph and then when you select OK then it's going to open Windows File Explorer and you can save that PNG file wherever you'd like. So that's a little handy tool. Now to look at other test measurements such as Burst Decay, you go up here to the Burst Decay button. I use a 35 dB vertical and so it's needing a little longer and the, uh, a little more samples than what I've given it. So 
So burst decay is shown here. Now I can include the reflections of the room, which you can see what happens when I when I do that. It's not pretty. Okay, so typically you'll want to gate your burst decay as well so that you're getting just the response from the speaker. Now looking at step response, you can see here with the step response, you can increase the gain a little bit to make it a little more visible, thicken the lines, and then I typically use two millisecond divisions in the horizontal there. So uh, to, to export this as an image, the actual uh, copy button is in the edit into copy, and then you can export that as an image file as well. So. Um, that's it for today, I think. It uh, gets you up and running on how to publish data. So just an FYI, in case you're wondering what equipment I'm using, I'm using the Dayton Audio UMM6 reference USB microphone, which I've used for years and it seems to be reliable. Um, I'm actually just, the audio is going out of my laptop using the 1 8 headphone jack into uh, an amplifier. And so my laptop seems to be um, low noise enough that I can can conduct these measurements, but if you want even lower noise, then I would suggest uh, using a USB DAC. Um, so maybe in another video, I'll show you how to do the spectral analysis, which, ha which has additional tools for looking at distortion. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day.